had a vice principal that was a major in the reserves. Okay. And he got, grabbed a hold of a bunch of us guys and told us we need a structure in our lives. So he, well, he actually asked us to enlist in his Marine Corps Reserve unit, and we did. And upon graduation, I went on active duty. I remember my drill sergeant come in the first day when we got the receiving barracks and kind of looked at us and called us all kinds of good names and went down the line and uh, asked people where you were from. And after a while, we found out, don't say you're from Texas. I got assigned to the 82nd Airborne Division in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. If you make five jumps perfect, you qualify as a paratrooper. And usually I have a percentage rate about, uh, probably about 60% fail. Really? Yes, sir. My early assignment was weapons, a light weapons uh, leader in, uh, in an A-team. I was there for 18 months. Uh, working the, the Cambodian border on search and destroyer missions. I had two recon missions in, in Laos that uh, we got in trouble and uh, we came out okay, but uh, we got the word from the, our CEO to continue on with the, what we're doing. I told him, no, we've got to compromise, we're coming out. So we came out. <laughs> I went to Thailand, uh, 46 company, 46 Special Force company for two years in Thailand. Uh, we're training Cambodians to go back to Cambodia and fight the NVA. Fred, when you came home from Vietnam, you know, many who came home from Vietnam were not welcomed, to say the least. What was your treatment like when you returned to the United States from like Vietnam? Like everybody else, especially when I was signed to the National Guard in Denver, Colorado. I had to escort the colonel around, and it got so bad that uh, I started carrying, not nunchucks, but a little pool cue about that big in the sedan. I got yelled at, I got spit at. I got, people turned their back on me when I got on the airport, so. You had to bite your tongue and you had to hold your emotions because I would have gone to jail. I just got back from Vietnam, I know what it's like to fight and, and hurt somebody. And I said, no, you can't do it. I got a family, three kids. You know, I came back from Vietnam, even my family never asked me, what did I do? I have brothers and sisters never asked me what I did. Why do you think that's the case? They couldn't understand. Most of us uh, were drafted back in the 50s. Some of us stayed, some of us didn't, but we all served our country. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody should have at least two years of any military service, whether it's, it's a Peace Corps or whether it's Army, Navy, Air Force, or, I don't care, but at least two years. Why do you think so? So they can see what the culture's like. I mean, get out of your world, of your own world. See what the rest of the world's like. See what the rest of the United States is like. Mm -hmm. I bet you got people here in Arkansas never been out of Arkansas. I did what my country told me, and I don't have no regrets. I would do it over again. There is no brotherhood like the service in your, for your country. Yeah. A true band of brothers. Yes, sir.